The reasons why it's a good idea to use that Class A insulated chimney pipe that you see on box stoves. Now, that Class A insulated chimney pipe that you see on box stoves is crazy expensive, right? I mean, it is unbelievable. If you, if I wanted to go buy a brand new chimney package for this stove, I've got, I think, like 16 feet of flue there. I'm just gonna shoot from the hip here, but it would be something like thirty-three thousand dollars, thirty-five hundred bucks. Uh, it is just exorbitantly expensive for that Class A triple wall chimney pipe. Now, Mark says, "Is it? Is it? You know, is it a good idea? Is it general chimney design? Do we do we want to pair that with these RMA rocket mass heaters?" And you got some great reasons why it's a good idea. So it's a really good idea because any insulated chimney means that you will retain all of the heat in your exhaust gases throughout the, as they travel through that stack. In other words, you're not going to be giving them up to the walls of that single wall chimney and out back into the room. Now, that's really great if your masonry heater, your stove is taking out all of the heat it possibly can from the flue gases and you need to save the rest for draft. And so using insulated flue pipe gets you better draft, it gets you more stable performance, it gets you, you know, easier startups. Um, there's a whole lot of positive benefits to having an insulated flue pipe. However, that isn't why <laughs> insulated flue pipe is required on box stoves. And I think you guys all know why it's required when we think about it. The reason it's required on box stoves is because box stoves are inherently crazy dangerous. <laughs> and I'm not a hater. I love box stoves, but it always boggles them my mind that we as a culture have just completely accepted the fact that it's pretty normal for a box stove to have a chimney fire. Like it's just kind of part of the deal, right? Like the newer stoves and, and you know, people are getting better. The new stoves do run clean and, and if, if used correctly, essentially eliminate chimney fires, but if used correctly is a bridge too far, I think for the, <laughs> for the mass population and I'm not picking on them. I had a box stove down there in my house and boy did I blow a lot of smoke um, and boy did I fill up some flue pipe with creosote. So the reason why box stoves require triple wall insulated $3,000 class A flue pipe is because that's there so the insurance company will let you have a box stove in your house because they're inherently dangerous and there's like a 90% chance of it burning your house down. Um, if you don't have that, like you're probably going to have a chimney fire, right? Like it, it's just par for the course with your box stove. And uh, I mean, to me, it's just crazy now. It's so funny looking back on it. And, and I haven't even gotten to the reason why it's funny, Mark. So you're like going, what? Why is it funny? And you're getting the gist of it. But, you know, it's funny because rocket mass heaters, you... I don't, you would have to ha have such a failure of a heater to have a chimney fire. Like, I don't even know if it's really possible um, to have a chimney fire in a rocket mass heater. They just do not create enough creosote. And should they create creosote, that creosote is going to manifest immediately following the riser, where upon your next hot fire, you will have a minor chimney fire just right there. But the chimney doesn't start until, you know, 30 more feet of flue or whatever, horizontal flue within your bench or a bell or whatever it might be. It's just very difficult, A, to get flammable residue to build up in the chimney and B, almost impossible to give it an ignition even if you did build it up. And even with my bypass in my cook stove, which kind of shunts the riser, generally right into the flue, I still never fear a chimney fire. It just is essentially impossible in my view. I'm sure that's a stretch. It's possible. Um, 
but the rocket mass heater version of a chimney fire is like a little uh, a little explosion in the in the chamber right after the riser. You'll get a little whoop when you kind of like if you filled it with smoke and it's filling with creosote, and then you ignite that stuff that's downstream. You'll kind of get a little a little explosion in there, just really little. I mean, I've done it where I've kind of seen the barrel pop or the you know, but nothing bad ever happens. It's happened to me like maybe twice in my career here, you know. Um, and usually just from making mistakes, having a smoldering fire and no bypass, uh, things like that. But yeah, so anyways, Mark, to answer your question, <laughs> I don't think I've even given you a straight answer yet, I apologize. Um, to answer your question, I feel 100% comfortable using single wall flue pipe for rocket mass heaters. Uh, yeah, for the inside, ideally. You know, ideally your outside section is still going to be insulated for those benefits because if you have really cold air hitting that single wall chimney, it's going to be really cooling the gases coming out and you can create a situation where you have a, a cold plug in the flue. It's hard for the stove to push past it and you'll, you'll wreck your draft. So ideally you will have an insulated section. Like if you're going to spend money anywhere, Use in, get an insulated chimney for the outer outside sections and use single wall for the inside. Um, and on that note, I've had really good luck holding out for triple wall chimney um, on Craigslist. You know, I look at it at Home Depot, I almost buy it and I walk out the door and then I'll just wait and stalk Craigslist and inevitably there's someone pulling out a wood stove, you know, it happens all the time that people buy homes with wood stoves and tear them out, right? And inevitably they'll sell that triple wall pipe for pennies on the dollar usually. And it's so expensive that it's still, you know, they'll still make a few hundred bucks, but you'll get a great deal. So, so there you go, Mark. Um, and yeah, Mark, right. So Mark says, I'm curious about clearance to combustibles for the chimney. I assumed that was another reason for double trip wall. It absolutely is. And please uh, don't let me talk you into doing something dangerous because that's not what I'm trying to do. Um, first of all, your single wall flue pipe with a rocket mass heater really should never get any kind of temperatures where it could cause any kind of combustion anywhere else. Even with my bypass open, I've rarely seen my flue outside pipe above, much above 300 degrees. Um, but certainly you don't want to put that single wall flue pipe right next to anything combustible. You can't really see it, but I've got probably six inches between the flue pipe and that wall back there behind it. And is again, my typical flue temperatures, I just said 300 degrees, but on average, I'm usually right around 200 degrees. You know, there's very, you know, I can hold my hand on the pipe most of the time. Very little chance for combustion to, to or co combustibles, you know, with, due to clearance issues. But of course, you're going to want to be really careful and protect anything you can with radiant barriers, or if you're at all concerned, you know, just make sure that you can monitor it. And then as I go up into the ceiling, of course, I did use a appropriate ceiling kit um, and roof penetration kit that comes with one of those triple wall kits. So it has, you know, rings of separation and I did put insulation in there. So the single wall pipe you see is really, it is just kind of freestanding in the room and it, it, it isn't close to anything. And, and you're right, you should be wary of running that single wall pipe close to anything that might be combustible, but it's a vastly different situation than a box stove. My old box stove, I would regularly see my single wall pipe. It went up out of the stove and then it did a, a horizontal jog before it entered the brick chimney thimble. And that horizontal jog in my single wall pipe would often glow cherry red. No kidding. It would just be bright orange. Um, and it was creosote or, or you know, um, yeah, creosote in there just burning off or just really hot gases from the stove hitting the elbow and, and getting the top of that pipe red, red hot. So in a box stove, it's pretty normal to have those flue pipes just incredibly dangerously hot. In a rocket mass heater, you will really never, ever, ever see that. So um, not going to try and convince you to put it close to something that can burn, but you should feel pretty comfortable with it. And once you've lived with it for a little while, you know, this is the most important thing is what I tell everybody is <clears throat> build it so you can monitor it. Leave yourself airspace. Make sure you can get your hand there. Make sure you can see it. 
and just be aware of it and then just start using it and start evaluating it and if you built it yourself I think that you will be able to you know adjust as need be if things start to look risky um, there's radiant barriers there's you know moving things farther away so there you go